This is a presentation about conservating pottery from Kopila, the city of the dead above the field of life. Kopila is an archaeological necropolis above the city of Blato, island of Korčula. The Hilford settlement Kopila or Stražošče is situated on a naturally sheltered elevation north of Blatsko polje on the island Korčula. It was introduced in archaeological written records by Nikola Ostojic in 1878, who gave description of the walls and mentioned some very interesting finds in his work Compendio Storico dell'Isola Curzola. The site was mentioned as a probable find spot for many valuable artifacts acquired by the Dubrovnik Museum under unknown circumstances by the end of the 19th and at the beginning of the 20th century. These finds primarily refer to several Corinthian vessels from the mid-6th century and the number of fibulae, pendants, pins, etc., which found their place in different scholarly articles thematically related to the southern Adriatic region in centuries before birth of Christ. Although it was recognized more than a hundred years ago, archaeological research commenced only in 2012, within Project Kopila, founded by the Ministry of Culture, coordinated by the Municipality of Blato and conducted by the Cultural Center of Vela Luka, Department of Archaeology of the University of Zadar and Museum of Ancient Glass in Zadar. So far, the research has resulted in important information regarding the topography of the settlement and its immediate surroundings, Acropolis, Suburbion and Acropolis, Access Road, etc and insights about the material and spiritual aspect of life of the Kopila inhabitants. The most important information refers to the necropolis situated on a lingula at the foot of the settlement, directly of the, over the Blatto Polje. Its spatial organization, in shape of a nucleus consisting of at least 10 interrelated, irregular, horseshoe-shaped brain plots, is unparalleled in the eastern Adriatic area. Monumental craftsmanship of each of the tombs indicates of prosperity and excellent skills of the community inhabiting this area. Five tombs have been excavated. Small finds consisting of great goods, personal belongings of the deceased person and a large amount of osteological material have been found. All of the research tombs have been used repeatedly for burial. Some of the findings are Hellenistic ceramic vessels, jewelry, numismatic finds, parts of the attire and iron weapons. After excavations, archaeologists reported the remains of at least 119 and at the most 150 Children, most of perinatal age, were found in graves 1 and 7. The reasons for their separate burial next to but not inside family graves are not yet known. With the latter, children's tombs share architectural so solutions, the methods of burial and the assortment of the contribution, which dates from the middle of the 3rd to the middle of the 1st century BC. It seems that some children's bodies, together with a ceramic wine glass of the Skifos or Cantorus type, and glass, amber and metal jewelry, are placed in small chambers made of thin stone slabs. Ongoing work on a successfully isolated DNA image will also genetically define the community copula and offer answers to questions about its biological openness to newly arrived Hellenistic communities. Cardboard boxes from the archaeological site Coppola were received in 2018. The boxes contain labeled plastic bags containing thousands of pottery fragments and few metal objects which we've provided to metals class on our department. After safe removal from the bags and organized arrangement, the fragments were subjected to methods of dry mechanical cleaning using different brushes to remove soil from the fragments surface. Harder soil incrustation were removed with solution ethyl alcohol to water in ratio 50 to 50 with frequently changing cotton swabs. As the cotton swabs were partially leaving threads on pottery surface, cellulose pulp dipped in distilled warm water was used to soften the harder incrustations. 
After drying process, each fragment was systematically signed with thin waterproof marker according to the signatures of the pack uh, to which they belonged. The fragments were pre-protected, coated with solution of 10% of acrylic dispersion, diluted in water and then signed with waterproof marker. After cleaning and drying, the fragments were joined and selected according to the characteristics of surface decoration, thickness of broken edges and pottery wheel marks according to which they could be more easily assembled into complete objects. As archaeologists went from idea that each burial has its own pot, they asked us to count all the handles and bottoms of the vessels. Thus, 140 objects were obtained. The objects were temporarily joined with adhesive tape and got their inventory number and were safely placed on shelves. After all fragments were joined to the appropriate unit, the necessary photo documentation of the each object was done. Before a more detailed screening, tests for water and acetone were made on hidden parts of the objects and decoration as well. As we know that acetone can react with black glossy surface of such reduction firing process throughout which red iron oxide turns to black color. We need to make remark that on some pots the adhesive tape resembling the object in a hole was not a good choice as some po small particles by removing it from the surface were flaking off. The removal of tape in such cases was performed using hydrocarbon solvent Chalcel A to soak in adhesive tape and release it in appropriate way. After removing the adhesive tapes, the Chalcel A residues was removed with acetone, although it harms some of the pots as we tested, but less than just removing of the tape without Chalcel A. Some object has calcium carbonate deposits on the surface, which we tried to remove using an ultrasound art piezo apparatus, which worked good but not so well on every pot, so we decided to leave such incrustation on water sensitive pottery in situ. For other non water sensitive pots, we decided to test actions of acids in contact with incrustations. For non-water sensitive pots, an 85% formic acid was used by diluting it in a 50 to 50 ratio with water and applying it to the object we have all pre-soaked in solution. The compressors had an effect on the object for 10 minutes after which they were removed and each item was washed under the running tap water at a temperature of about 23 degrees Celsius in order for pH neutralization. After rinsing, the items are set aside on a safe surface out of the direct sunlight to dry. If it was necessary, the procedure was repeated on the more stubborn parts of the surface deposits. It's important to secure safety measures before using acids, such as safety goggles, lab coat, proper gloss, gas masks, and ventilation. Very few of the fragments are partially damaged in structure, ceramic matrix itself that we decided that consolidation is really needed as body is so pure in structure, bordering by a light touch. For those objects, we made a concept to just consolidate those areas which are infected. A table of adhesive properties was made. Tests of glued fragments for which we could not find their place of belonging were used to determine the most suitable adhesive, as adhesive needs to be softer than the bonded ceramics. Polyvinyl butyral mobital B30H was chosen for water sensitive pots and Panatol BB and polyvinyl acetate for non water sensitive pots. The cellulose natured adhesives, which are often used for bonding archaeological ceramics, were not in our considerations after this test. They form corrosion of metal objects, which should be presented on exhibition in the same display case of the grave G7. The next step was filling lost parts of objects. We discussed with archaeologists about their needs and our conservation ethics, which are often different. We came to an agreement to make a complete restoration on one-fourth of the pots as was their choice and just a partial reconstruction of the missing parts in order just to fix the stability of the object. 
the spot test for silicone rubber uh, and the latex mix was performed in order to make fills more easier. But assuming the ammonium from latex milk reacts with angope and the silicon rubber was leaving a greasy glossy film on the surface. The plasticine was not a choice as it leaves surface greasy which can attract even more card dust during time. As the objects show as very delicate, dental wax was used. It was heated on a burnet and adjusted to the existing shape of the object after which it was transformed to the part of the object where the filling was needed. Prior to applying plaster of Paris, the joints were coated with Polaroid P72, 30% uh, diluted in acetone to prevent the sulfide salts penetrating the object and make the fill a bit more reversible. After application, plaster was treated with metal tools and fine sandpaper. Where it was necessary to reapply plaster on plaster, a layer of diluted shellac in alcohol was used. Prior to retouching, tiny holes in plaster of Paris formed by trapped air in plaster were filled with caramplast, a ceramic-based material for filling small missing parts. The last step was a retouch of the plaster surfaces. Black matte paint based on casein was used. The color is resistant to water and light. The reason for this black and not a shiny color was the story about G7 grave itself. We wanted at least to try to tell the sad circumstances under which the pots were buried and to make the reconstructed part more invisible, somehow kind of denying those missing parts. If we think about the reconstruction of social and symbolic context of the pots, we need to adjust the reconstruction of the missing part to the cultural and historic context of this pottery. So for the retouch, an original artist's intention was here not a question, but a sad story of the buried children tombs. After retouching of ceramic objects is completed, photographical documentation was carried out. First step packaging is placing a panel of polyethylene foam, then the second step is placing the panel inside negatives and signatures. Before the items are placed inside of the constructed package, the items are wrapped in acid-free paper. After the completion of conservation and restoration works and interventions carried out on the objects, it is necessary to enclose the proposal for handling, storage and display of objects in order to protect and preserve them preventively. The proposal includes instructions for handling the objects, handling the objects exposure and storage to minimize damage caused by careless or inappropriate handling, and instructions for maximally slowing down the degradation of the object by carefully controlling the temperature, humidity, and brightness. Ceramic materials, although stable in structure and materials, should be handled carefully with clean hands to prevent contamination of the material with dirt and grease, or with anti-slip or non-slip gloves to avoid accidents caused by slipping objects out of hands. Objects should be provided with a place for storage or display away from external load-bearing walls and windows to, in order to avoid capillary rise of moisture and eventually degradation of objects. The objects should be placed in a safe place away from directive sunlight, preferably in a special glass chamber or shelf in which to control and maintain relative humidity, temperature and reduce air pollution of the object. Some kind of sunlight filter, foil or curtains should be placed on the windows to reduce the discoloration of the remaining pigments of the ceramic material. Here you can see the display case of Grave G7 on the opening of the cultural center of Blatu in Kocula. We were not very happy with the way that the display case was organized. As dealing with such a sensitive story, it needs to be shown and present it in a more appropriate way, we think. From our side, there is a big ethical concern. Firstly, we are dealing with grave remains of children. And second, there comes the question about taking those remains by excavation out of the archaeological context, which is in this case the real place of belonging. Thank you for your attention.